So next, I want to discuss time evolution and for physics. So suppose I give you the description of a system, which is given by some wave function at some time t or t zero, how do you find what the state of that system is at a later time? Well, according to the axioms of quantum mechanics, it's uh, h hat is the Hamiltonian operator or the energy operator, a Hamiltonian operator acting on psi. Let me not um, give you, okay, let's just do this. X at T is equal to I H bar D by DT psi of X of T. So this equation is known as the Schrodinger equation. It's a very, very famous equation. And this equation is a first order in time, okay? And if I look at a typical particle Hamiltonian, then the H is going to be something like, say, P squared by 2M plus V of X. And then, you know, if I put in the, the operator here, this is going to be minus H bar squared D by D of X or uh, squared by 2m, right? So this will be second order in space, but first order in time. Uh, do you guys know of any equation in physics which is like that? Apart from the Schrodinger equation? Wave equation? Is that is it the wave equation? Like it is a wave equation. This equation is the wave equation. But suppose there's another famous equation in physics, which is second order in space and first order in time. General relativity. Uh, no, general relativity is mostly uh, Laplace equation. Uh, Laplace's equation doesn't have any time, right? Time dependence may have. Yeah. The, the heat equation, right? That, that's the, the heat equation or the diffusion equation, generically, right? So, but the interesting thing about the diffusion equation is that the diffusion equation has a time ordering built into it. Right. A diffusion equation will describe, so suppose that you have some, you know, some distribution which starts as a Gaussian. If you run it, if it's a solution to the diffusion equation, what will happen is that this Gaussian will spread out, right? Now, if you run it backwards, what happens? It becomes a very, a very sharp spike, right? So there's a singularity in the diffusion equation which stops it from going backward in time, generically. But the Schrodinger equation amazingly avoids that, although it has the same form as a diffusion equation or a heat equation. So sorry, this is a heat equation is a better term because this could be a heat flow. And the way that the Schrodinger equation gets around it is by being complex. So if you put t equals to minus t in the Schrodinger equation, you actually get the same equation as long as you replace psi by psi star. And basically, if you take the complex conjugate, so you also replace pi by minus i. OK? So the Schrodinger equation describes a system going backward in time, but with the wave function given by psi star. So that's why. Just by being complex in nature, Schrodinger equation encapsulates the time reversibility of microscopic physics, which is this just a wonderful, beautiful application of complex numbers in nature. Um, I think I'm always like just awed by this fact. Um, and I just wanted to share it with you. Okay, so um, the time evolution is given by the Schrodinger equation. Now we can solve this equation equation formally. So the formal solution of the Schrodinger equation is this. The time of evolved wave function at some time t is given by 
the exponential of the Hamiltonian operator times minus i t by h bar acting on the wave function evaluated at zero. Okay. So this is the Schrodinger equation, the, the time evolution. Uh, and, uh, and this is a weird sort of um, operator. It's called the time evolution operator. And it's defined. So it's defined as a power series. That's a form, it's a formal definition. Okay, so this is a sum of many operators. Each term in this series is a power of H. Okay, so this is the definition of the time evolution operator. And then you can plug it into the Schrodinger equation and see that this is indeed the solution. It's uh, pretty easy. This is indeed a solution as long as the Hamiltonian is time independent, okay? Um, if it is not time independent, there is a formal solution to this equation, which is also very beautiful, which is called the Dyson series. And at some point we'll meet the Dyson series, I'm sure. Named after Freeman Dyson who I had the great fortune of spending two days with a few years ago before he died. <clears throat> um, so how do we solve the Schrodinger equation? So it's amazing that the way to solve the Schrodinger equation is to, is to find the eigenvalues. So if you, yeah, if you find the eigenvalues of the H operator, that is if you solve this equation, H acting on psi n of x at some given time, fixed time says zero. Let's call it zero. If you can solve this eigenvalue problem, then you have solved the Schrodinger equation. How does that work? The way it works is that we have an assumption which is true and it takes a lot of very high powered mathematics to prove it is that you know these eigenfunctions psi n they form a complete basis for your hilbert space that means if you have any state in your hilbert space at some time zero you can express them as some as a linear combination of these guys okay this is a very powerful fact and this allows us to solve the whole problem. So, so I give you some wave function. You can very easily find this because this complete basis is all also orthonormal, meaning that n m is delta m n. By using that, it's very easy to show that the, to find this coefficients. You just take the inner product with the with the particular psi. And then what you do is that you want to find psi at some later time, t. What you do, you apply the time evolution operator, minus i h t by h bar applied on psi at x at zero. Now, by the linearity of, so these are linear operators. So by linearity, uh, what happens is that, you know, you, you expand this as a linear combination like so. So there's a sum over n, c n, psi n. These are the energy eigenfunctions at time x and zero. And then this thing, this operator, it goes inside the sum. When it goes inside the sum, this is c n. This h acts on this and this h is replaced by e, the eigenvalue, right? So this becomes e to the power minus i, e of n t by h psi of n x of zero. And that's, that's it. You know, if you know the energies, you know, this is everything you know. You know the, the energy eigenfunctions, you know the energy, so you can calculate this. These you can calculate by the initial value of this thing. And therefore, you know this. Okay, so this is how we solve the Schrodinger equation, just by solving the
energy eigenvalue problem here. Okay, so um, we have about like, I don't know, uh, 20, 15 minutes left. I don't think I can get to the end of this lecture in 15 minutes, but uh, in the next lecture, you know, before we discuss the problems, hopefully I'll be able to finish this off. Okay. But I think it's a good point to stop and ask for some questions. This is probably very overwhelming and it's fine. I'm teaching you a lot more than what we will need. Uh, it's just a, such a fun subject and I just wanted to give you a flavor which was somewhat complete. I cannot be complete here in two lectures, but I just wanted to give you a more, a fuller picture than you know what is needed. Okay, any questions? Sir, so, I have a question. Oh. You go first. Yeah, go on, go on. All right. So, um, uh, if you could go back to the part where we discussed the real eigenvalues. Okay. Here. Yeah. So, uh, was this it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the uh, the notation where you say that h dagger psi, I thought that like h dagger could only act on a bra. So it looks like we're acting on a cat. No, you can, one. yeah, you, you can act on a cat. Of course, this is a sleight of hand. I have not described it. You can think of these as matrices for all effective purposes. So if it's a matrix, then it can act both on the right and the left, right? And the way it works for operators is by integration by parts. Because what happens when you do, when these are operators instead of, what they become is they become differential operators like the momentum operator that we saw. And by doing integration by parts and using the boundary conditions that these states go to zero at infinity, plus and minus infinity, this effectively becomes the same thing as a matrix. You can do the same kind of manipulation, manipulations as matrix manipulations, okay? So this notation, which is a very neat notation as was de developed by Dirac, kind of, you know, is agnostic about what the underlying, whether it's a finite or infinite dimensional, okay? Okay, I see. <clears throat> so yeah, you try that, you know, if, if, you, if you get stuck, you know, we can discuss this again next time. Because that's an interesting point, which I tried to, you know, brush on the carpet, but you caught me. Actually, this confused me in linear algebra. That's why I asked. Okay, yeah. So, you know, the idea is that you can do this by using integration by parts, which we did over here. You do integration by parts and, you know, and then you use the boundary condition. And, and voila. You know, you started with something, a, a linear operator which was acting on phi, but you end up with a linear operator which is acting on psi, psi star. Okay? So this is the trick. Okay, any more questions? I think somebody else had a question as well. Uh, so, like, can you give a concrete example of time reversibility both in the classical and quantum case? Um, like Newton's law is also time reversible, I suppose. Yes, Newton's law is time reversible. You're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, uh, could you like give a few concrete examples? Okay, but I mean Newton's law, of course, is very. I mean, just the solar system, right? In its most naive form. I mean, the sun, of course, is not time reversible. You know, if we don't, if you don't, you know, consider temperature, it's a completely time reversible uh, thing. Not the solar system, I mean, the solar system has a direction, but you know what I mean is that, you know, uh, this thing can go either this way or that way, right? Um, okay, and in the quantum case? Well, in the quantum case, you can have, uh, uh, you can have, uh, uh, well, maybe this, is this a good idea? I, I think so, yeah. You have a hydrogen atom where the electron is in the ground state and it, uh, you know, absorbs a photon and it gets excited. I think this is a cheating a little bit, but, you know, 
it's almost time reversible. And then you know, when it goes down, it emits a photon of the same frequency, right? Um, this I'm kind of this is um, this happens in an environment, so this is not exactly. Uh, but I think you know it is uh, time reversible. You can, it, it also happens in the in the so-called vacuum. It, it it can also happen in zero temperature. <clears throat> so this is just a, the simplest thing, you know. And then there are stuff like, for example, Compton scattering. Right? Compton scattering is when um, uh, you know photon. You know, a, a photon, you know, um, collides with an electron and the electron and recoils and, and, you know, and the photon goes off like that. And that's a, that's a scattering that is, um, you know, this is, you have to treat photon as a, as a particle, otherwise you don't get the right answer. But the, the reverse of Compton scattering can also happen, I think. So... I think it's called, but yeah, it has some name, but so, you know, I'll, any reversal, you know, I, I don't know, I, uh, I, it just seems like any reversal reaction in chemistry, you know, is, is, is a time reversible process. Do, do, do you agree, Nahi? Uh, yes, so I think, yeah. Okay. Is a, is a good example of a quantum process that is time reversible. But of course, I mean, the thing is that because it has to be isolated, because if, well, I mean, the thing is that whenever we consider entropy, that's when things become problematic, right? And somebody in the class have actually asked me for a lecture on this. And I'm thinking of doing that after we are done with our uh, normal syllabus. And I have, I still owe you guys two lectures, right? So I wanted to do those two lectures as entertainment. And, you know, I, I'll record something and you know put it out there, and you guys can watch and have fun. So one of them will be on the air of time. So this is something I'm thinking about. Okay. So uh, maybe we should uh, carry on and uh, try to get ahead a bit, unless you have more burning questions. So what should I do if I? didn't understand anything for the last 30 minutes oh that's a good good question uh watch again and don't worry about it okay, okay. any book would help or any um book uh, I, I kind of um i kind of wrote this on completely without any reference material um uh, but now, will the mit a course of on quantum mechanics work well that's an amazing course yeah of course like a barton zwieback i mean he's an amazing teacher yeah uh, barton zwieback is is just the, one of the most fantastic teachers in the world yeah 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 you know what's that mit course i mean zwieback that's a great course i mean i should watch it if i had time i would watch it 